Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Latin View Analytical Limited Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant line will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing the star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Asha Gupta from ENY Investor Relation. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Steve. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Q4 and full year FI24 earnings call of Latent View Analytics Limited. The results and presentation have already been mailed to you, and you can also view them on the website www.latentview.com. In case anyone does not have the copy of press release or presentation or you're not marked in the mailing list, please do write to us and we will be happy to send you the thing. To take us through the results today and to answer your questions, we have the CEO of the company, Rajan Seturaman, whom we will be referring to as Rajan, and we have the CFO of the company, Rajan Venkateshan, whom we will be referring to as Raj. This is just to avoid the confusion while doing the transcript. We will start the call with a brief update on the business, which will be given by given by Rajan, and then followed by financials given by Raj. As usual, I would like to remind you that anything that is mentioned on the call that reflects any outlook for the future or which can be construed as forward-looking statement must be viewed in conjunction with the risks and uncertainties that we see. These risks and uncertainties are included but not limited to what we have mentioned in the prospectus filed with SEBI, filed with SETI and subsequent annual reports that you can find on the on the website. Having said that, I will now hand over the floor to Rajan. Over to you, Rajan. Thanks, Asha, and uh, thank you all for uh, joining this uh, investor call. Uh, wanted to uh, first of all. Uh, uh, kick this off by saying that uh, this year, uh, while it has been a bit of a challenging year for uh, most organizations, we are uh, very happy with uh, the kind of performance that we have been able to put out. Uh, close to 19% uh, growth under uncertain uh, economic conditions. I'm sure that many of you are following the results of uh, other companies uh, in the space, and uh, you've been uh, witnessing uh, the impact that uh, the macroeconomic scenario has been having right on these uh, organizations. Uh, of course, uh, in quarter three, we were a little bit more optimistic about uh, how quarter four could turn out for us, given the conversations that were happening at the point in time. Uh, I do have to indicate that uh, some of those conversations are taking uh, even longer to transpire, and therefore our quarter four uh, quarter on quarter growth has been uh, only of the order of 3.6%, uh, uh, though the year on year uh, has come in at 21.7%. Uh, Overall, I feel that uh, the general uh, sluggishness and uncertainty, while it is resolving, uh, it is still going to take some more time for it to play out. Uh, we are energized by the fact that uh, uh, all the all the renewals that uh, we want to do by the end of the year, they are all done and we are able to start the year on a fairly solid uh, footing. Uh, but of course, uh, the challenge around uh, winning large discretionary projects continues to remain. I think that uh, the confidence in undertaking uh, initiatives that are anchored around uh, new ideas and innovation uh, will take some more time. There will be, of course, a lot of pilots and experimentation that will happen. Uh, for us as well, uh, that has played out well in the fact that uh, we have won six new uh, additions to our account list uh, where projects have been kicked off. We also saw a lot of uh, new initiatives uh, on a smaller scale uh, being kicked off by our existing accounts and our existing shareholders, uh, stakeholders. So all of that gives confidence that the uh, general interest and experimentation is still on, especially around the areas such as uh, generative AI and leveraging the, the entire uh, large language model and GPU technology that is available. Uh, on that note, uh, some of the highlights that we had this quarter, other than the additions to the to the client list itself, uh, we uh, saw a good traction in terms of our uh, generative AI solutions and uh, our pilots. Uh, we were able to kick off a lot more. Our laser and AI pen solutions find, continue to find traction uh, in the marketplace. 
uh, and there are new conversations that we are adding to the list uh, uh, with every passing week. Uh, we also uh, uh, formed a partnership with uh, NVIDIA on the generative AI tech stack. You all know that uh, NVIDIA has uh, been uh, the leader in terms of uh, the GPU technology and the chipsets. And uh, there is a huge waiting line for uh, NVIDIA GPUs in general, given the uh, a huge amount of interest that uh, the world is witnessing on large language model and GNA in particular. Uh, NVIDIA has also been looking at uh, how they can create more stickiness by uh, not just uh, doing the chip on the hardware part, but also creating a tech stack that can enable the usage of the GPUs to deliver on uh, use cases uh, that can give uh, business impact. So this uh, tech stack is what uh, we are leveraging in the partnership with, uh, with NVIDIA, and we have been uh, working on multiple use cases uh, with clients as well as uh, some internal pilots. And early results are very encouraging, especially in areas where uh, you need a huge amount of compute to handle streaming data and create real-time analytics and uh, insights from there on. So this NVIDIA partnership is something that uh, we are really excited about. Uh, we also launched a marketing analytics uh, center of excellence on horizontal. Uh, we have been doing a lot of work in marketing analytics over the years. Uh, we felt that uh, on the back of all of that, uh, it's a good time to put our arms around uh, some of the latest and greatest that is happening in that space, especially around full funnel growth marketing and uh, uh, how we can uh, look at uh, B2B companies or revenue generation through marketing mechanisms. Uh, these will be areas of focus uh, for the marketing analytics uh, team. And uh, we are also going to be leveraging Gen AI solutions uh, for uh, creating that kind of uh, use cases and value propositions. Uh, you have already been updated about uh, the acquisition of uh, decision point. Uh, we are still in the final stages of uh, diligence and uh, paperwork. Expect that uh, this could take another uh, uh, three, four weeks for us to conclude. Uh, the last a couple of weeks, and I and some of our uh, leadership teams were uh, uh, in the U.S. and in Mexico meeting up with uh, clients of uh, Decision Point as well, and we were very energized by the conversations that we have had with them uh, in terms of, uh, one, just the uh, stickiness and the quality of work and the impact uh, that Decision Point has been delivering, but more importantly, the, the synergy opportunities uh, that come about because of uh, interest in the solutions that Latent View has built in the area of R&D and innovation, in the area of uh, supply chain, on-shelf availability. These were solutions that uh, were of interest uh, to the stakeholders and clients of Decision Point as well. And uh, on, on the flip side, uh, we also see a great deal of interest amongst our sales and uh, client partner personnel in uh, bringing the RGM solution that Decision Point has built into the clients that we work with on the consumer package goods side. Uh, so overall excited by uh, the progress there, and uh, we are expecting that uh, more will happen right in the coming quarters on the back of uh, decision point. In fact, uh, if I were to uh, 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 kind of put out uh, 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 our uh, projections and expectations uh, in a two-year time frame, we are expecting that uh, our consumer package goods uh, uh, practice could potentially get to about 20% of our uh, revenue on the back of this acquisition and further investments that uh, we will make in that area. Finally, I just uh, wanted to uh, uh, wind up with uh, uh, one other uh, exciting thing that uh, happened this quarter. We were selected as the partner of the year by the International Myeloma Foundation, and uh, I was in New York uh, a couple of weeks back to receive the award. Uh, very excited about that because uh, uh, while a lot of the work that we do for uh, uh, our clients is in the area of top line and bottom line impact, given that uh, they are for-profit organization, uh, the International Myeloma Foundation is a, a not-for-profit organization that has been focused on uh, helping uh, patients uh, diagnosed with myeloma to, uh, one, understand uh, their scenario and context better, and then start preparing for how they can handle the situation, shortening uh, what we call the time to cope so that uh, they can uh, find the ways by which uh, they can uh, get back on the recovery track. So we have been helping build the kind of data platform that is necessary to assimilate information from multiple sources so that uh, doctors and caregivers and patients can get uh, a full 360 degree view of uh, everything that impacts them right on their uh, journey to recovery. Uh, so this in some sense is uh, really a life or death type of uh, uh, challenge that, uh, that we have been tackling. And uh, I think uh, this is uh, a matter of great pride uh, for all of us you know, that we have been able to impact uh, this in a meaningful fashion. 
so more to come uh, along uh, those lines uh, in the quarters, hopefully working with, uh, uh, with the International Mandelbaum Foundation and, and other similar organizations. Uh, yeah, with that, I will uh, pass it on to Raj to touch upon the financial highlights. Thank you, Rajan. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, in our earnings call. Um, this will be the last earnings call for the financial year FI24, um, and we are happy to sort of end the fiscal on a strong note, right? While, while I know uh, at the beginning of the year, I think we had planned for a much um, faster rate of growth. Um, you know, the the like Rajan just elaborated. Um, the, the overall macroeconomic uh, environment continued to be fairly challenging through the year, and therefore we are particularly delighted that despite um, uh, the, the overall sentiment being quite uh, uh, muted even now, we managed to deliver a 19% growth year-on-year uh, -year basis. Uh, traditionally, Q4 of a fiscal is is is, is uh, uh, in some sense it's a it's a bit of a soft quarter for us, right? Because Q3, which is the last calendar last uh, quarter of of the calendar year. Uh, tends to be the strongest, um, and in that sense, uh, Q uh, Q4 uh, is generally soft compared to the Q3 quarter. We're happy to report, even in uh, despite um, uh, despite that um, you know overall trend, we were still able to clock a decent 3.6 percent uh, uh, growth on a quarterly basis, uh, and uh, a 21.6 percent growth on a year-on-year -year basis. Right? Um, in constant currency terms, we grew by about 3.8 percent. I think for the, for this particular quarter. Uh, we've had overall uh, a bit of a depreciation on um, the, the dollar compared to the, the previous quarter, right? So that also had a little bit of an impact on uh, overall uh, rupee-denominated uh, uh, growth, right? Um, in terms of the other income, our other income for this particular quarter stood at about 15.8 crores, uh, decrease of about 31% on a, on a sequential basis, uh, which is fairly large. Um, this was primarily driven by, I would say, uh, a thing in the in the the forex losses. These are essentially loans that that have been given by Latent View India to its group companies um, in um, the uh, in in Europe as well as the US. Uh, we had a gain of close to about 5.5 crores uh, in the in the previous quarter, which was offset by in this in this particular quarter we had a loss of about one and a half crores for, on account of uh, the reinstatement of offset loans, and that sort of offset. Um, um, yeah, you know the uh, other income that that we clocked for for, for Q3, uh, but from an operating uh, standpoint, uh, EBITDA for this quarter uh, stood at uh, 40.4 crores, uh, reflecting a growth of about 9.8 percent on a on a quarter on quarter basis, right, and a 34.2 percent on a year on year basis, right. Uh, we are also happy to report that we you know we we sort of delivered to the promise that that we we had put out at the beginning of the year um, that. Um, our EBITDA, uh, 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 you know, uh, margins will sort of inch back towards the historical levels of 25% plus levels, right? Uh, by the end of this quarter, of course, we would have ideally liked this to be uh, largely driven by, by by revenue growth. But uh, you know, uh, we've been able to get to these levels through a combination of revenue growth as well as, I would say, strong fiscal discipline that we were able to exercise, uh, plus some of the operating efficiency that we were also able to see in 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 Q4. Of the current fiscal, right? Um, uh, one of the other factors that also led to, uh, to in some sense, um, the, uh, the the op, uh, the EBITDA margin uh, improvement was some level of rationalization that we had done in some of the G team investments that we had made in Europe. Where, uh, you know, some of those, you know, based on performance reviews, we we did some bit of rationalization in our go-to-market spend specifically, uh, which also resulted in the margin expansion in this particular quarter, right? Um, um, our patch. For this quarter, stood at about 45.3 crores, uh, reflecting a decline of about 2.8% uh, quarter on quarter and a growth of about 32% on a year on year basis, right? Um, um, and uh, uh, on a full year basis, revenue stood at about 640 crores, uh, reflecting a growth of 18.9%, uh, um, right? And, and um, uh, as as we had outlined at the beginning of the year, the endeavor was to, to drive. Um, uh, growth in the region of 25 to 30 percent, even if that meant that you know we had to sacrifice margins a little bit. I think some of these um, uh, actions that we took at the beginning of the year, where you know we went ahead of the curve and we made a lot of significant investments, we we also reevaluated and recalibrated some of those those those, those investments that we made, and uh, we believe that the current EBITDA margin levels are are are, are sort of sustainable uh, 
going forward as well uh, if you're able to repeat the revenue growth that we clocked in the current year in terms of the overall geographical split of, of revenues us continues to be the dominant geography contributing 95% of our overall revenues uh, europe contributed uh, about 1.4% uh, to the overall revenues right but we are seeing good traction in europe um, rajesh spoke about uh, revenue growth being also driven by some uh, new logo additions we continue to see ad logos new logos in both europe and us and which is which is quite promising right uh, uh, for us right ideally going forward we would want uh, in in the coming fiscal we would want europe and an apac to contribute at least 5 to 6% of our overall revenues and we will um, uh, we'll be able to give a better outlook on the contribution of europe as we uh, get into fy25 right um, overall in terms of our balance sheet our our, our cash and cash equivalent including the ipo money uh, uh, sorry excluding the ipo money is totaled about 1100 plus crores uh, as of 31st march 2024 right the decision point uh, acquisition will be funded through a combination of money that we had raised uh, through the ipo so you would recollect that we had earmarked about 147 crores out of the ipo money uh, towards inorganic expansion so we will be fully utilizing that uh, as a part of the decision point acquisition incrementally the the uh, the additional uh, outflow that will happen which will be close to about 180 odd crores will be funded entirely out of the company's uh, 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 internal cash accruals right our overall headcount for the quarter stood at about 1280 people um, as 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 we've always highlighted we will continue to invest in people we on onboarded close to about 133 uh, people from from uh, campuses this uh, in this particular quarter right uh, and as we uh, head into uh, fi25 we fairly optimistic that some of the relationships that we built Uh, through the course of fi24 will start yielding results um, and uh, our strategy will play out um, uh, positively with that i'm going to hand it back to um, asha uh, and we can open the floor for q and a thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touch tone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handset while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles the first question is from the line of vimal jamdas gohil from alchemy capital management please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on uh, good set of numbers uh, sir my first question is overall on the growth in the margin outlook that you provided uh, uh, in a in a very turbulent year you've been able to sort of uh, grow at uh, high teens in dollar terms uh, so just just on the trajectory uh, and especially after the after the acquisition that we've taken you look at the synergies that we we will have that will prove to be an additional lever uh, maybe the environment could bottom out in 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 the first half so in the second half we could see material acceleration any thoughts on that and the second question is on margins uh, given the fact that you know decision point operates at uh, uh, 30% ebitda uh, we front loaded some of our investments uh, and despite that uh, i think you mentioned that the margins could could remain at these levels so if you can just maybe clarify that uh, your comment on ebitda margins was it including the acquisition or uh, uh, excluding that thanks yeah hey vimal uh, rajan here and uh, thanks for the question uh yeah in terms of uh, the uh, the growth that uh, we are expecting uh, obviously it's good to be optimistic uh, but you will also recall that uh, when we started off the previous year the expectation was kind of similar that uh, the first half will be a little tepid and things will pick up in the second half of the year now reality have been a bit more challenging than that with uh, the uncertainty and the uh, and the sluggishness uh, extending right throughout the year and at this point in time the general commentary i mean you would be hearing from other companies as well as that uh, we are still not out of the woods and then it will take some time uh, as i said uh, we are energized by the fact that uh, all of our ongoing work has been renewed uh, in entirety and uh, we have a good foundation the pipeline building though uh, i would uh, have to admit that uh, uh, it would have uh, it could have been much better in comparison to where we are uh, today there are a few opportunities that are large Uh, 2 million dollars and more but uh, larger opportunities uh, especially if uh, these are new initiatives uh, they are taking a lot more time 
to certify and the expectation is that uh, we will start to see some acceleration right in the in the coming quarters so uh, i will uh, i'll say that you now we are still cautiously optimistic right about how things can pan out in this year of course the addition of uh, new capabilities such as uh, revenue growth management right that is coming on the back of the decision point acquisition plus also the investments that we are making into the marketing analytics horizontal the nvidia partnership the fabric uh microsoft fabric uh, ecosystem right these are all things that we expect will pan out well for us in terms of creating new conversations and opportunity and therefore uh, we should see an uptick right on the back of uh, all of these things uh so yeah that's where we are right in terms of still cautiously optimistic about things will pick up i will uh, request raj, raj to comment on the margin impact right of that so specifically on on the margin impact of the acquisition so so obviously while um addition point does operate at uh, at at um, um you know 30 plus and 30 percent plus ebitda margin level so definitely in that sense uh, the acquisition will be a bit accretive for us once we start consolidating these numbers right but again we'll also have to appreciate that you know at, at the current size uh, addition point is at roughly at about 1/7th of of the size of latent view right so therefore it will not meaningfully move the the needle right in terms of an overall ebitda expansion right now when it comes to our own organic i would say um uh, um um uh, organic um uh, in terms of our own organic um, um uh, ebitda goals for the next year right uh, our goal would be to sort of uh, stick to this band right which is which is where we've operated in uh, between 21 to 23% for this year right uh, we will still continue to invest for growth right and we will keep looking to uh invest in capability building as well through the year right not just in so i think from a go to market standpoint i would say a lot of the investments that we wanted to make are already fully baked in right uh, uh, uh this is i'm talking about account managers i'm talking about farmers and hunters that we have in the market so those most of those investments are all fully baked in where we may still continue to incrementally invest would be on the capability building side uh where we are either building some of the new age solutions you know rajan spoke about the gen ai uh, uh, some of the interesting solutions that we are building it could be in partnerships it could be in marketing events right there we will you know be i would say front end some of the investments uh, in the beginning of the year in the in the first half uh, because that's the that's the only way we'll be able to build momentum and and pipeline as we get into the fiscal right so i would say definitely for the first half we will continue to remain in this band of 21 to 23% right and and uh, our uh, the growth uh, tra- you know sort of comes back to the the 6 to 8 percent and the 10% sequential quarter growth uh, we should be back at the 25% uh, ebitda margin levels towards the end of the year but definitely for the first of the first half of the year we want to remain in the band of 21 to 23 percent understood gentlemen thank you so much and uh, all the very best thanks so much thank you The next question is from the line of Mohit Jain from Anandrati. Please go ahead. Yes, yeah, sir. On the growth part in FI25 versus 24, uh, so if you could help us give, or maybe from a pipeline perspective, you spoke about it that pipeline is not as great as you would have expected. But can you give some perspective on a YOY basis? How is it looking? Uh, and also, if you could comment a little bit on the TCV side, like is it up, down? flatish so how how should this be numbers carrying out in fi25 yeah so uh, hey mohit big garden uh the pipeline is uh, obviously uh, larger than uh, definitely there at the start of uh, the last year or even at the midpoint of uh, last year what i meant is uh, that we would have liked to see uh, more large initiative opportunities right in the pipeline uh, much, much of the conversation still Uh, seems to be uh, incremental in nature and uh, that is where i think uh, uh, the uptick will start happening when we have even larger conversations that get into the pipeline uh, but that uh, i mean said that uh, it is uh, uh, where we are at this point in time would be that uh, the confirmed uh, revenue that we have uh, on on or the order book that's 100% confirmed plus the extensions that we are in the second half of the year largely they already add up uh, to uh, uh, more than what we have done as revenue right for the last year because the run rate that we have at the end of quarter you see really what is uh, going in uh, into the next year so uh, we are at add above 
the revenue that we have done for the last quarter. The pipeline at this point in time, if I take pipeline and then uh, uh, apply probability standard and then I look at uh, what that will get us, uh, it will give us uh, a further growth of close to 20% right, uh, of uh, what we have done for the last year. Now, of course, there is this job of converting the pipeline and then there is a job of adding more into the pipeline as well. So in some sense, uh, based on all this, uh, what guidance we can provide at this point in time, it will probably be around a similar kind of a growth rate right, compared to what we have seen in the last year. Uh, now, the expectation would be that uh, we'll be able to fill in more into the pipeline as well as improve the chances of conversion right, as we go along. Now, some of the things that I talked about earlier in terms of the investments that we are making in the marketing analytics horizontal, the fabric, uh, the, the, the fabric uh, ecosystem and uh, the partnership with any, these are all uh, expected uh, to provide uh, more fillers. What I am saying right now, though, just the organic part of it, we are not uh, factored in uh, the revenue that will come in from the acquisition. Of course, uh, the inorganic uh, acquisition uh, related revenue will be all on top of uh, what I'm talking about. So uh, that, that's where we are at this point. So organically, we should be very similar to FI24 from a growth standpoint and also from margin standpoint. That's correct, yeah. Broadly, that's the kind of guys that we're able to understand. Right. And second, we were very positive on Q4 uh, at the beginning of the quarter. Uh, so, and while we ended up slightly slower than what we anticipated, so is there some cancellation involved here, or do you think it is just the elongation of deal, which is which is resulting into slower growth compared to, or maybe it's just a gap of three months, uh, the growth is slower in Q4 versus what we anticipated earlier? Yeah, there's no cancellation. We are not seeing any adverse uh, developments at all. It's just that uh, the optimism that we had in the first half of the year and even uh, getting into Q3, uh, some of that uh, is uh, taking uh, much longer uh, to really convert. Uh, so uh, we, we were expecting that uh, we would uh, uh, close uh, a few more uh, opportunities and then commence work, the work on them in Q4 itself. What, what I see right now is that uh, these have taken longer uh, some of these are very interesting uh, opportunities. In fact, there are at least uh, two, three of them which are at least half a million dollars plus in terms of uh, the, the revenue size. Uh, sitting today, I mean, for the first quarter, we see that uh, uh, the growth uh, could again be back in the six, seven percent range, uh, quarter on quarter. Uh, but of course, uh, we have to, uh, I mean, we have like, you know, a month and a half, right, kind of like remaining in terms of getting some of the work underway. Uh, we'll have better clarity on how uh, quarter two and the rest of the year pans out right, uh, over, the, over the next uh, couple of months. But at this point in time, I would say that, uh, yeah, it's uh, a Q4 being tepid is largely on decisions getting delayed and uh, no adverse development right in terms of ongoing work. And uh, last for Raj, so we will be integrating from Q1. Uh, for the entire quarter, is that correct? So we will, so we will not be able to get the full benefit of Q1, uh, Mohit. If I if I can answer it correctly, uh, we will our our, um, our our target date for closing the drive uh, was initially around the 15th of May, but um, there are some regulatory approvals that need to come in, and and some of these things are are sort of beyond the control of of, of uh, you know the companies, right? So it would it may take us a week or two more to get this done. So uh, hopefully our our our, our uh, endeavor is to at least get one month of results consolidated this month. We start seeing the full benefit of the the of the acquisition from Q2 onwards. Understood, sir. Thank you, and all the best for 25. Thank you. Thank you. Participant who wish to ask question may press star and one at this time. The next question is from the line of Srinath V from. Elvata Capital, please go ahead. Hi guys, congratulations on the good set of numbers. Uh, wanted to understand, uh, you know, how, how did Decision Point perform in Q4 or for the full year? If you could share some numbers and, uh, you know, how are we progressing on integrating Decision Point with our uh, CPG business? Our CPG business probably did not have a kind of suitable performance that we would have expected at the beginning of the year. So how are you looking at it? And 
from my understanding of decision point do they have the kind of capabilities for develop markets or are their products more suited for developing markets where we may also have some uh, you know uh, sales network where we can take them to so can you kind of explain how uh, decision point and our cpg business will move forward say with a kind of a three year outlook uh, that would be great thanks Sinath, I'll, I'll I'll sort of take that first question on on the on the on the full year performance, right? So this is something that we also indicated when we did the the press conference, for, you know, on the back of the the acquisition announcement. Um, so they had, for the full year, their uh, the last last fiscal, their their revenue was close to about 12.8 million dollars uh, in revenue, um, and um, uh, their margins, like we've mentioned, were in excess of 30 percent, right? So that's what they they recorded for. Uh, um, uh, the whole of last fiscal, uh, right? Um, they are, you know, um, of course, uh, from an outlook standpoint, uh, you know, given the the smaller base, and also the fact that uh, they operate in uh, fairly high growth uh, areas, right? Um, of RGM as well as GenAI, the expectation is that they should be able to grow at a much faster rate than uh, the latent view uh, growth rates, right? So, you know, we, we expect them to continue to grow at, at, you know, anywhere between 25 to 30%. However, uh, to your point, right, on on whether, how much of that, uh, their, their current solutions and, and sort of services that they render in, in LATAM markets, how much of that can be replicated um, uh, in the US markets. I think that's specifically the area where, where latent view will sort of come in. I'll let Rajan talk a little more on the go to market uh, activities uh, that we are already sort of uh, jointly pursuing, as well as some of the initial, I would say, feedback that we are getting from from joint prospecting that we are doing. But we believe that um, the, the the solutions that they built, uh, while while historically they've grown on the back of of of, of their strength in, in LATAM, they should be able to uh, replicate some of that success in uh, our focus markets of US and Europe on the on the back of our go, go to market teams. Yeah, on the integration, uh, there has been uh, progress that uh, we have been making uh, already over the last uh, month, month and a half. Uh, in fact, I don't know whether I mentioned it earlier, but uh, I and uh, uh, Christian Vengata, uh, uh, chief client officer, were, uh, were in the U.S. and in Mexico meeting with uh, their clients and also their personnel over the last uh, couple of weeks. And uh, we were very energized by, uh, by, by what we saw. Uh, there's a great deal of interest uh, amongst uh, decision points, current clients on the capabilities that we bring to the table around R&D and innovation and uh, around uh, supply chain and uh, on-shelf availability. Likewise, there is a great deal of interest uh, within our teams on the RGM capability right, that we can take into the, our, our existing accounts. So from an integration perspective, we have uh, already put a structure in place where uh, uh, Ravi Shankar, who is the uh, the founder and CEO of Decision Point will take on the overall responsibility for the CPG practice. And we have uh, deputed one of our uh, top uh, delivery person uh, uh, into managing the combined delivery right, of uh, uh, the CPG organization right, on the back of his acquisition. Uh, in addition to that, we are also allowing for full overlap of sales and revenue credit uh, between the two teams so that uh, there is absolutely no friction uh, between the the two organizations in terms of pursuing opportunities in the market, uh, jointly going to market where we're able to pitch the full suite of solutions right, that we're able to bring to the table uh, and uh, making sure that uh, uh, we are actually uh, getting the synergy benefits right of the relationship as well as the uh, capabilities that have been built by both the organizations. So I'm expecting that uh, the integration will uh, benefit uh, from the structure and the incentive and the other mechanisms uh, that we have put in place. And uh, we should be able to see some rapid acceleration uh, on the growth of the CPG practice right on the back of that. Of course, uh, this is all planned. We do need to execute well, but that's what uh, we are all here for, right? And we'll be focused on this uh, from the day one. So you believe that this product can be basically taken to develop markets as is, uh, or, you know, because it's a it's a product stack, right, in that sense. So that that's where I wanted to kind of quiz you a bit. Yeah, so, you know, so it's a solution. I wouldn't uh, put it as a product at this point in time. I mean, what they have built is an RGM uh, capability, which is a combination of uh, the frameworks and approaches that they have built. 
plus the ip that they have created right uh, on analysis around pricing around promotions pack size optimization right and so on so uh, it is still being offered in a services model by the decision point as well but uh, the ip that they have built which helps them deliver on that is a fairly strong ip this apart there is a solution called beagle uh gpt which is uh, leveraging large language models and operates within the microsoft teams ecosystem uh, but uh, to deliver uh, the insights and the results of the analytics right to the decision makers the end decision makers so it's a fairly strong combination of uh, solutions accelerators and ip right that enables the delivery of services so that's what uh, we have been uh, talking to uh, with our clients as well many of our clients are today in the us and in europe and our teams are very energized by the early conversations that they have been uh, having rgm is a fairly uh, important topic for uh, most cpg organizations irrespective of uh, where they might be located today right uh, from a geography standpoint and uh, if you are able to demonstrate a strong capability in that area uh, there is quite a bit of traction that's what uh, we are uh, seeing in our early conversations and the expectation is that uh, there'll be a, a good pipeline right, of uh, real opportunity that we can build and convert going forward perfect just a last question uh, how do we see inorganic uh, going forward uh, you know is it that we would kind of pause uh, looking at uh, i remember we have a team looking at prospective companies uh, do we pause and work on integration and come back 12 18 months later or uh it's a much more parallel process given that other parts of our business may have uh, some interesting synergies with other you know com- prospect and companies maybe uh, you know in industrials or data engineering or so on and so forth so how do you see inorganic uh, opportunities uh, you know now going forward given that we have had a significant uh, recent deployment it will be a parallel process uh, srinath uh, we do not uh, intend to take our eyes off uh, the uh, opportunity funnel uh, from an organic uh, standpoint in fact next week i and uh, the leadership team are uh, going to be in pune meeting with uh, another uh, prospect uh, in the data engineering space right data engineering plus they have built a platform there are a few areas of focus for us one as you pointed out is uh, data engineering with uh, focus on strong capabilities even in one of the hyperscalers right that could be a really interesting Uh, opportunity for us we are also looking at uh, bfsi and retail as two other uh, industry verticals uh, where there could be opportunities and if uh, it's a combination of those two dimensions meaning data engineering work for financial services company then that will be uh, uh, even better because it takes on uh, both the dimensions so that's uh, that will continue to be an activity going forward Now we are uh, in fact uh, continuously uh, uh, engaging with some other uh third party uh, the external partners that we are working with as well uh, and uh, we will be looking at uh, opportunities that are available i think the timing also today it's very interesting because uh, many of the smaller companies in the last uh, 12 18 months because of the macroeconomic sluggishness have uh, faced challenges and then there is a more realistic kind of an expectation from a valuation standpoint Uh, and therefore uh, the window of opportunity will be available and you would want to leverage it so i don't think uh, uh, there is any plan to uh, slow down or uh, uh, not look at uh, uh, opportunity of course some of the management time and bandwidth and attention will go into the integration itself so to that extent uh, uh, we will factor that in but clearly the look out for uh, uh, opportunities is always on i'm sorry to interrupt sir uh i would request mr srinath if you have any more more question i would request you to please come up in the for question queue again yeah. thank you the next question is from the line of arvind shetty from diamond asia please go ahead uh yeah hi sir uh, thanks for taking this question i uh, just wanted to understand we are expecting first half to be uh, relatively muted but uh, q1 would uh, despite that q1 would be look more like 6% plus kind of a sequential growth and uh, in the exit of the year we would like to hit about 8 to 10% sequential growth is that the kind of aspiration that we are going for um sorry you you the first part of your question can you just repeat that once again sorry 
uh, uh, just correct me if I heard it correctly. The first half of FY25 is expected to be muted, but uh, the first quarter could be more like 6% plus uh, kind of sequential growth. Did I get that correct? Yeah, so so the it, yeah, the, it's not like the first half is expected to be muted. Of course, you know, one of the things that Rajan did speak about is we have to continue to build on the pipeline that we're already seeing, right? But um, uh, our sense is at this point in time, based on the visibility that we have, we will be able to generate a 5 to 6 percent sequential quarter growth for, for Q1. Um, uh, specifically, when it comes to H1, we expect that some of the deal conversions that we will see in, in Q1 should also give us additional sort of revenue. Um, sort of visibility as well as uptake in in Q2, right? So so um, at this point in time, we will not be able to give a, a quarterly guidance for for Q2 specifically, uh, but we do expect that uh, you know the expectation is that growth momentum could pick up in H2 compared to H1. Got it. And uh, our aspiration to reach about 25% margin in exit quarter, and and that that would be achieved if we sort of hit that 8 to 10% kind of a sequential growth. Uh, so, from a YOY standpoint, uh, do we see that you no know, uh, our revenues on a YOY basis keeps improving through the year? That is correct. So, 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 like I said, right, a lot of the investments on the go-to-market side, right, have already been fully baked in, uh, in current cost structure, right. So, we don't intend to add incremental headcount on the uh, go-to-market and, and sales functions, right. So, that is something that that we have already, in some sense. Uh, we have we have sort of fully factored that in. Where we will look to to spend incrementally would be on the capability building side, the solutioning side, and also to some extent on the marketing spends itself, right? I think where we believe some of these spends will help us sort of set us up ourselves, set ourselves up uh, really well for FY26 and 27. So with the three-year view, I think some of the <clears throat> investments that we will we will be making in the current year may not give us immediate revenue uptake in, in the current fiscal, but we believe some these these are essential for us to to, to continue to deliver the 25% the type growth, right? Over the next two to three years, we need to make some of these investments on marketing as well as solution building. Now, to answer your question on margins itself, like I said, right, our, uh, for the first two quarters, our, we will, uh, you know, uh, try to keep the margins in the band of 21 to 23%. That's where we would like to keep them. You would also appreciate that Q1 typically has the full impact of a wage increments that we have given out, um, uh, which in the current fiscal for <clears throat> for India-based roles, we, we've done increments in the range of 8 to 10% uh, on an average. Uh, and for US uh, roles, these have been in the range of 4 to 5%, right? So uh, there will be, I would say, some level of impact on, on, on margins in Q1 on account of the wage hikes. Plus also seasonally, you will have higher visa uh, uh, spends right in in Q1, so we believe this will have some some short term impact in in Q1 specifically, but we are uh, fairly confident that we should be able to maintain a band of of 21 to 23 percent. If we're able to get back to the six to eight percent sequential quarter growth, we should be inching up on uh, on the margin side as well towards the rear end of the year. Uh, sir, and uh, uh, just last question on decision point. Uh, if you can decision point revenues for uh, Q4. And the number, headcount addition that we have done in this quarter, I believe uh, it does not include the, the employees of decision point, right? That is correct. It does not because it's also because we have not consolidated, we have not closed the acquisition, right? So we will start reporting numbers on a consolidated basis by, by the Q1. At which point in time, we will also include their headcount when we report numbers. Sure. And decision point revenues for Q4, if you can. Again, like I said, right? We have not. They have. They are. They are a privately held company right now. They are still in the process of closing their books and getting their their accounts audited. So we will not be able to give out those numbers at this point in time. All right. Thank you, and all the best for FI25. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Karan Uppal from Philip Capital India. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Two questions from my side. Uh, firstly, uh, on the hiring. So if you look at the hiring for this quarter, it is uh, probably the strongest since the IPO. However, the commentary on FY25 growth is a bit cautious. So how shall we interpret this? Uh, are you being uh, more conservative given that FY24 was a bit weaker than your expectation? 
that's first and a related question to that is uh, if you look if you can give us the vertical outlook for fy25 in fy24 the growth was led by technology and industrial verticals but retail cpg and bfsi were a bit muted so the growth outlook uh, vertical wise would also be helpful yeah i'll uh, rajan here i'll take the question on the on the outlook for the full year right and i'll get uh, raj to comment on the on the verticals uh yeah i mean i don't know whether i should say that we are being conservative but uh, obviously the, the general uh, as i said no the uncertainty uh, in the in the economic uh, in, the, in the macroeconomic scenario is still there i mean it is not completely sorted out most organizations uh, would be making similar commentary uh as i said earlier i mean a lot of the work that we are already doing it is fairly important and critical and that is the reason uh, the book of work has been renewed uh, but newer initiatives are still uh, experimental in nature there are a few good uh, big ticket opportunities but uh, it is not the uh, the gush of opportunities that we would have liked to see right uh, when we start the year so that is the reason for uh, uh the kind of outlook that uh, that we currently have in terms of uh, how the year will uh, the year will pan out uh, of course uh, uh these things can uh, these things can get impacted by uh, uh, the the initiatives that we are spending money on and, and investing i talked about uh, uh, the partnership with nvidia i talked about the marketing analytics horizontal right i mean these are the bets that we are making that uh, these could provide the new ideas and the innovation right that uh, clients are looking for and uh, that could uh, spur growth but we will want to see how this plays out okay over the next uh, one quarter or so right before we are able to give better guidance as you want to add on the the verticals yeah see in terms of the verticals i would say you know as we get into uh, the current fiscal i think um, we will um um technology will continue to be um, i would say uh, the the sort of um, the big uh, vertical for us but we are definitely very excited by the prospect of of, of uh, partnering with uh, decision point which will significantly add to the capabilities that we can take to market jointly right one it opens up a new market as well for us which is latin america uh, um, and uh, we're happy to report that some of the early conversations that we're having even with clients in in latin america are seem very interesting for some of the work that we do which is on the marketing analytics side so cpg will definitely be again uh, you know we are, we are expecting this year to be a fairly strong year for for the cpg vertical financial services again will be a vertical where there will be a big focus uh, this year right so some of the clients that we work with we are seeing some early sort of conversations where there is there are significant large opportunities that are getting created uh, in financial services uh and and apart from that industrials would be the other uh, other big focus vertical so for us technology followed by cpg followed by financial services followed by industrials would be the in that order would be uh, the sort of verticals that that will drive growth for us this year okay uh, just a follow up on the first question so the hiring is uh, very strong so are we hitting the peak in terms of our utilization and hence the hiring is very strong so the hiring is uh, partly also a commitment uh, that we made in the campus uh, so uh, right. we uh, we have taken a look at how the next year is uh, going to pan out based on the early indications that we have and then we have gone ahead and onboarded uh, most of the campus uh, offers right hires that uh, that we did so at this point in time there is only a small batch of 30 people out of the 450 offers that we had uh, made on campus so we already onboarded uh, close to uh, 360 people there were some dropouts because this year has been a bit protracted in terms of the onboarding uh, but of course many of them also held on to the offer because of the general scenario in the market out of the people that we have onboarded we have uh, already uh, deployed about uh, i would say 40% of the people right and the rest of the people are in either boot camps or they are shadow mode and so on so there is a fairly strong uh, uh, i mean there there's a significant amount of campus hiring and onboarding that we have done we have tempered the next year's hiring right uh, on the back of what we have seen this year given that some of the people that uh, we have already onboarded will be available right for upcoming opportunities for so next year uh, we have made only about 250 offers uh, on the campus 
so partly what you see as the headcount addition is uh, uh, really on the back of all the campus onboarding that we have done and we will uh, watch in terms of uh, where the utilization match so right now the utilization is lower than where we would have been in the first half of the year it has gone down on account of the campus hires but uh, this is something that uh, we have anyway factored on right in terms of uh, the margin profile that we want to maintain right at this point in time okay thanks thanks a lot uh, and all the best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of rishab shah from bugle rock pms please go ahead yeah hi uh, thanks for the opportunity so in one of the polls you said that uh, you are doubling down your investments in the cpc consumer retail and even today you are saying that uh, the growth in fy25 would be led by cpc uh, cpc consumer retail so so uh, why do you think so so what would be the next trigger point for lipin view in coming years in the cpc the uh, cpc retail consumer retail segment yeah so the the inorganic uh, investment uh, completely uh, in the cpg space uh that does all their work in the in the cpg space so obviously that be a huge chunk of investment there but even if we look at uh, our own uh, organic investments right in terms of adding the front adding client partners we have made uh, investments in the cpg space so we are expecting that that will pan out so in terms of uh, uh, the contribution cpg the expectation is that we will uh, inch towards uh, uh, about a 20% kind of a contribution right over the next 24 months for the last year we were probably at about 8% or so right in the single digit so there is a expectation that cpg will contribute uh, quite a bit right to the revenues now as i mentioned earlier we are always on the lookout for inorganic opportunities and we are also making investments uh, in the financial services and in the retail retail probably will be uh, uh, slightly behind in terms of uh, uh, financial services uh, the investments that we make in financial services retail will be a tad lower but at this point in time uh, uh, the plan is that we will be showing up uh, on what we can do in the financial services space so if you ask me how the scenario will look say 18 24 months time definitely the contribution from uh, these two verticals cpg as well as financial services should be uh, uh, much much better than where we are today right uh, today both are in the single digits we are expecting that both of them will be in the high uh, 20s uh, sorry high i mean close to the 20% mark which means that uh, technology uh, as a vertical right anyway the contributions will Uh, will come down as a, on a percentage basis. I mean, we are expecting growth to happen in all the three verticals, but on the back of the investments, the growth should be stronger in the CPG and the financial services space. Okay. My second question is: so How big will be the data and analytics market? So the estimate for the round 24 was around 300 billion dollars. So do you think that it will be achieved in the calendar in this calendar year? And what's your aim for the next five years? Where will this market be, and what will be our market share in this entire universe? Uh, the market share, I think, we are too small. Okay, uh, in the entire uh, ecosystem. So not today, today market share. Let's say where we stand in the universe. Where will we? Where will we be in the next five years? Yeah, yeah. I'll get to that. So the expectation. I mean, in fact, we recently took, uh, we commissioned a market intelligence exercise. uh and and that is starting to give us some uh, input as well uh, the expectation is fairly similar right to what uh, uh, we had seen when we did the ipo right if you remember at drhp we had talked about uh, uh, uh market size of potentially 300 billion uh in uh, in year time frame right at a cagr of about 18 20% uh it's fairly similar of course uh, a big chunk of that is uh, also including uh, captives of uh, multinational but out the market is going to be very large and that we said no we are fairly small in the scheme of things so that therefore there is a lot of headroom for growth our expectation is that uh, we will be able to get on to a 25 30 30% uh, growth trajectory uh, over the next 3 uh, 5 year time frame of course uh, that is the organic growth trajectory uh with every uh, acquisition we will be able to create a step change as well 
and the intention will be to try and uh, at least replicate not uh, improve upon the growth rate right on the back of the acquisition now uh, you can do the math uh, based on this right to see what it will lead to in a 3 5 year time frame uh, the, the the point though is that i mean now there, there is enough headroom for growth 25 30% kind of a growth trajectory should be very much uh, doable provided the we don't uh, uh, have too much of the sluggishness i mean of course the last 12 18 months have been uh, Uh, extraordinary because of all the interest rates and other challenges of course uh, i mean it's not that like we won't have any such challenges in the in the future we will have to of course uh, uh, look at what is the impact it is having but broadly from a long term trajectory standpoint i would say that uh, 25% plus growth rates are very much possible okay so my last question is so from the last two three quarters we have witnessing that the uh, addition of new accounts are smaller in size so Uh, has the management focus changed from the bigger accounts to a smaller account for any specific reason would you like to highlight uh not really i don't think there is any uh, th- there is definitely no deliberate uh, choice of uh, going after uh, smaller uh, organizations our, our uh, focus continues to remain the fortune 500 companies uh, the acquisitions uh, the new logos uh, revenue that they are bringing in though is on the tad lower side okay in, in the sense that uh, uh, most companies right even large uh, fortune 500 companies are reluctant to kick off substantial new initiatives given the uncertainty that provides uh, the one redeeming uh, area has been uh, generative ai and uh, related technologies but even there it's still largely pilot and experimentation that is happening right? too many big substantial initiatives like right, that have been kicked off i mean we had one win uh, which was close to the half a million dollar mark and we have a second win recently right with one of the large auto manufacturers in europe which is also close to that mark so we are expecting that that will pick up uh, in the in the coming months and quarters hardly the the growth still is on the back of the ticket size of the initiatives right able to get in with in the new logos and not necessarily any change in the strategy in terms of which accounts you go after okay okay thank you so much sir yeah sure thank you the next question is from the line of agam from raj trading please go ahead yeah hi sir thank you for the opportunity congrats on good set of numbers so no audible yeah yeah we can okay. hear you agam go ahead. yeah the uh, just a quick question uh, i uh, missed your opening remark so for the other income you said that some loans you have given to your noble competitors so can you talk on that i just missed that uh, part yeah the other income is typically i mean these are you know part of the the ipo proceeds that we had raised that there we said that we will capitalize some of our overseas subsidiaries in europe and and us okay right you will understand that some of these um, so one of the subsidiaries is in uk and the other subsidiary one of the other subsidiaries is in um, netherlands and germany right right so these are the industry loans that have been given out uh, right uh, and which are repayable uh, 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 over a 3 to 5 year period uh, the loss is on account of because you know as per as per accounting standards that we have to comply with you know we need to restate these loans um, every quarter and whenever there is a sharp sort of movement in either gbp or euro compared to um um uh, compared to uh, the rupee uh, we have to book these mark to market losses uh, as part of our uh, 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 for that quarter and that is what you see over here but at a consolidated level ideally because the you know the, the gain in one place is effectively the loss is another place but unfortunately the loss in this case is is you know is is not counted no. as part of the the pnl it actually goes into other comprehensive income and that's why you see the impact on at a pbt uh, okay. level yeah and you wanted just as a previous participant you said before that you just participant you said that uh, you do uh, reaching 25 to 30 percent growth in 3 to 5 years so should we assume this post 3 years or 1 uh, year down the line No, no. Sorry, I didn't mean that we will reach 25 to 30 percent in a five-year time frame. What I meant is that if you take the entire period of time 
a CAGR, right, of 25 to 30 percent is very much uh, possible given the market potentials and the focus that we have, right, in uh, select areas. Now, currently, as you see, right, for the last year, we have done about 19 percent. How quick we can move from 19 percent to 25 percent plus will be based on how the the economic scenario turns out, right, in the in the immediate future. And of course, uh, if you take a long enough time frame like five years, there will be other bumps also that one will witness. But a CAGR of 25-30% uh, within that period is uh, very much too open. Thank you. Uh, we will go on to the mo move on to the next question. The next question is from Akshay from 361 Asset. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for taking my question and uh... Uh, thanks for the detailed explanation through the call. I just had one clarification on the comment you made on FI25 and Q1. So just trying to work some numbers. Uh, you you mentioned how you may have a visibility of six five to six percent growth next quarter, and you also mentioned that FI25 on an overall organic basis should be similar to what you did in FI24. Now, if, if I look at your exit run rate and take a 5-6% sequential growth, then the next quarter run rate itself gives you that F similar growth which you did in FY24. So, obviously, you will be growing in the coming quarters, Q2, Q3, Q4 as well. So, uh, I'm just trying to understand what, what's behind that commentary of similar FY25 while the numbers suggest otherwise. Yeah, I say, I say, you know, so, you know, obviously, as we stand at the beginning of the year, I think, I think the, the, the commentary and the guidance that we want to give out or put out is basis the visibility that we have for the full year as of this point in time. Obviously, we all understand that the order book and the pipeline is getting built up through the course of the year, right? Um, uh, also, you'd have to appreciate and understand that our, our, you know, the type of business that we are in, uh, typically our. Uh, our client contracts are, uh, you know, up to a period of one year, right? So we don't uh, generally have visibility. I would say, while we have a good visibility in terms of what are the projects that are likely to get extended, uh, uh, right? But we don't have we don't have multi-year relationships with uh, a lot of the accounts, which is why the the guidance that we are at this point in time able to put out is on the basis of the visibility that we have at the beginning of the year, which is based on the current order book plus the high probability pipeline, right? But of course, you know, as we execute through the year, uh, and as the visibility gets better, uh, these growth rates can be improved over the current period. Um, uh, but obviously, there is pipeline that needs to get converted. What we've also seen in Q4, uh, in fact, one of the questions that we answered, I think, was was by one of the other un earlier analysts had asked that while the initial indication was that we will grow uh, at, at about five percent or in this particular quarter, we did also see some deals that we were hoping to sort of close out. Uh, which sort of slipped into the next quarter, right? So some of these things will also play out, right? Which is why we want to give out a, a guidance which is more reasonable and achievable, and we will update the guidance as we as we as we head into the year, uh, depending on the visibility. Got it, got it. But uh, uh, but just to for my confirmation, the the numbers which uh, I called out uh, wa was it a fair calculation or was or was I missing something in in those? those numbers it was, it was i mean it was a fair calculation obviously you know um, uh, but then you also have to understand that you're not a at the end of the day you know we are uh, in some sense right we're not a we're not a SaaS business or we're not a product business where you know the run rate can be give, you know taken to be like a given for for every quarter right so we are at this point in time what we believe is is fairly reasonable and possible is the is the growth rate that we have achieved between 18 to 20 percent uh, for the year but as we as we continue the year, some of the deals that we are actively pursuing, right? Uh, Rajan spoke about the pipeline. There are a few large opportunities also in the pipeline. If we're able to convert some of that, we should be able to accelerate growth. Uh, but at this point in time, the 18 to 20 percent is what we are comfortable guiding. Got it. Thanks for that. And one last thing on margins. While uh, a decision point comes at a higher margins, and you guys have been talking about exiting the year uh, again, expanding the margins through the year. Uh, but I'm just curious to understand. Uh, if you have, you've seen quite. Hello. 
sorry to interrupt the current participant has been disconnected uh, that was the last question for today i would like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments yeah okay thank you uh, so yeah i mean i would uh, i think we covered most of the ground in terms of uh, the uh, uh, the highlights that we had to share and uh, also the outlook that we have uh, of the business. Uh, I think uh, uh, some of the additional momentum uh, will come from uh, opportunities that uh, we are able to create on the back of uh, the initiatives that I talked about, now, whether it is in Generator AI, whether it's uh, Microsoft Fabric ecosystem, or whether it's the NVIDIA partnership or the marketing analytics uh, horizontal, or, or the opportunities that we can create through the acquisition. Uh, obviously, the uh, the intent and the planning, uh, there's a lot of thought that's gone into it, and uh, we are focusing our time and attention right on, on what we can do on this front. Uh, of course, uh, uh, how all of this, this pans out will also depend upon uh, uh, how, how much uh, of uh, spending and optimism returns uh, to the market itself. Uh, we are seeing uh, early signs that... Uh, the investments that we are making are all in the right areas back on the back of the conversations and uh, uh, the leads that we are getting. We do want to uh, keep focusing on them so that we are able to convert them into opportunities, real opportunities and real uh, project work right, that we are able to win. Uh, overall, I would say that uh, uh, at this time, given uh, the performance that we have had in the, in the last year, where we have done reasonably well in spite of a uh, 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 of a full year rate right, of sluggishness. Uh, we are expecting that uh, we will be able to do better in the coming year. But as uh, I said earlier, it is a tone of cautious optimism that, would, that we would like to adopt at this point in time. We will be able to update you on how things pan out uh, in the coming quarters. The expectation is that uh, things will uh, be a general uptrend from uh, uh, Q1 to Q2 to Q3 to Q4. Uh, we don't uh, see any uh, uh, other significant uh, adverse things that might be happening, right? Just within the data analytics space, so, uh, overall that space will continue to grow, and the areas uh, of our focus uh, will give us uh, even further uh, momentum, right? In comparison to the industry growth rate, so we are uh, we, we feel confident, right, that our strategy will uh, play out well uh, on the back of optimism returning right, to the market. Uh, yeah, with that, I think. Uh, we uh, we have covered the, the ground that we wanted to cover, so we can we can close the call. Thank you all for joining today, and uh, look forward to engaging again. On behalf of Latin View Analytics, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.